you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I'd like to welcome Sue and Steve back home. I realize their residence is in Florida, but this is their home. Always. Yes. And then we also welcome Rachel back. And uh, the only announcement I have is the uh, thrift store from 10 to 3. Does anyone have any other announcements? So that's uh, small backpacks for children. They usually run around five dollars, and it's for our food, um, our children's backpack ministry. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us begin worship.
is this kind of offering that is for our hearts, the mind, and our whole life to God that we mercy and love. Okay, we're going to rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, the Son. Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. What, what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a poem that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, so let us be poetical girls and boys for a while. Take power away from politicians and see what's left. Take money away from the rich and see what's left. Take authority away from clergy and see what's left. Take fame and knowledge away from intellectuals and see what's left. 
after those things are taken away, what's left is what they truly are. Therefore again, take soul away from me, take love away from me, take justice away from me. Even if I am still alive, even if I still live on as though nothing has happened, then who am I? Who truly am I? So, according to the poem, let us imagine uh, we take power, money, authority, and knowledge away from us. Take things seemingly significant and crucial to your life. As you erase those things one by one, you will get to the point you think about what's really important to you. You may find what matters the most in your lives. You may find things to make up your life. Probably, he wants to ask this question. What is the most important thing or value in your life? What is at the core of your life? And in this poem, he writes, such things at the core of, he, core of his life are soul, love, and justice. Very beautiful and very challenging. Then for you and me, what are things at the core of life? Think about what makes us truly be ourselves. In today's Gospel story, Jesus invites his disciples to think about that question. We know this story very well, but let us uh, approach uh, this story from uh, a diff slightly different perspective based on the Bible. In the Bible, he asks them to take the human things away from their, their sight and see clearly what is most important to their lives. Yes, Jesus and his disciples are on the way to the town Caesarea Philippi. And all of a sudden, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Here we find the core Christian confession from Peter. He answers, You are the Christ. And in the book of Matthew, it is said in a different way, You are the Messiah. But the meaning is basically the same. Messiah is a Hebrew word, means God's chosen and anointed one. Let me talk about the background of how this word originated. After long years of exile and oppression under the empires, the people of Israel eagerly looked for the restoration of the glorious kingdom of Israel in King David's age. And that's why Jews have looked for the Messiah from the lineage of David, and people sometimes call Jesus the son of David, right? And anyway, Jews believe that God would finally fulfill God's promise by anointing a powerful leader, a Messiah. And Peter also believed in this promise. In this sense, he says, Jesus, you are the Christ, Messiah. Following Jesus, Peter witnessed Jesus performing so many miracles with amazing power several times. So he became very confident that Jesus would be the Messiah and, and said, Lord, Lord, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And his answer was exactly correct. And that's why Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon. You are Peter, the strong rock. I will build my church on this rock. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Yes, indeed, Peter's confession became the cornerstone of the Christian faith. But see what happened right after that. 
Jesus predicts his passion and death rather than the seemingly victory, dominion, fame, and glory that a Messiah is supposed to achieve traditionally. And Peter can't understand Jesus. He is now very confused about what his teacher said. And probably he might be very seriously questioning in his mind, like, what kind of Messiah is he? Or more honestly, thinking like, what benefit can I get by following this man? For Peter, Jesus must not die like that. And now he takes Jesus aside and even rebukes him, saying, what on earth does the Messiah undergo such things? This shall never happen to you, okay? And then Jesus reject Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Even though Peter answered the right thing a while ago, Jesus knows that Peter's heart is full of human things. Peter totally misunderstands why Jesus, the Son of the living God, came to this world. To this Peter, Jesus may have asked, like, take your human desire for power, honor, and dominion and glory away from you. Take your misled expectation and selfish ambition away from you. Take all those human things away from you. Be humble, then see what's left. What's left in you? Is my cross left in you? Is my love still alive in you? Am I still there in your life as your Savior and as your Lord? And I'm sure if Jesus were here with us, he would have the same question. Through this worship service today, what does Jesus want us to do? Surely, He wants some cleaning in us. Cleaning of our hearts. And for this spiritual cleaning, we need to take human things away from us. However, what are those human things? My will against God's will? Pridefulness and selfishness against others? Condemnation and judgment rather than forgiveness and mercy? What else? Ask yourselves. Therefore, let us take those human things away from us and see what's left. Is Jesus Christ still left in your heart as your Savior and as the Lord of your life? Is His cross shining somewhere in your heart? Then follow him and take up the cross. Yes, we can start from there, always there, again and again. Jesus and his cross. Do we believe that our life and our church ministry only rely on this core? Nothing can, nothing, nothing else can be the essence of our faith. Nothing else can be the core of our life and our ministry. We should remember. And when we face a hard time on our life journey, when our life gets messy from them, let us remember today's Bible message and try to take human things away from us and hold on to the core of our life again and again and again. And let this Jesus and this cross become the core of our life and find who truly we are. Find out who we are called to be. Let me again read a part of the poem I introduced at the beginning. 
take soul away from me, take love away from me, take justice away from me. Even so, if I still am alive, even so, if I still live on as though nothing has happened, then who am I? Who truly am I? And let me change slightly these phrases in this way. Take Jesus Christ aware away from me. Take His love and grace away from me. Take His cross away from me. If I still am alive, if I still live on as though nothing has happened, then who am I? Who truly am I? My sisters and brothers in Christ, I hope and pray that we all can strive to be true Christians and as the disciples of Jesus Christ. For that, we should be humble and see Jesus Christ and His sacrificial love on the cross. They are the essential, the eternal source of our life. So let's humbly and sincerely confess like without Jesus, without the cross, without His sacrificial love, without the self-giving love that we learned from Jesus, we are nothing. Jesus, you are the Messiah of my life. You are the only Lord of my life. And then, let us take up our cross and follow after Jesus in our daily lives. Amen? Amen. So, can we see? Uh, 2158, just some closure, long living, and everyone rise and sing together joyfully.
surprised to each other. Be surprised, be surprised, be surprised, be surprised, be surprised, be surprised. Do we have any prayer requests today? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Beth. down there and I did hear that crack. <laughs> You'll pay for it. Well, you heard that one. I'll pray for you, Steve. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we confess our sins and failures before you. We ask you, you ask us to take up the cross and follow you. But sometimes we lack the courage to do so. It seems like such a scary thing to do. We're so used to being in control. Help us to have the courage to relinquish that control to you. We ask your forgiveness when we have failed to live our lives as you desire us to. And we pray for the strength needed to take up that cross and follow you. We know we can't do it on our own, but that we need the strength and the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we praise you for the unending grace and mercy and for your assurance that we have been forgiven through faith in Jesus Christ. And as forgiven and beloved children, we come boldly before you and make our supplications and petitions known to you. We pray for your church here on earth. Not only your church in Napa, but for the whole body of Christ, his holy and universal church. We ask that you protect and guide her. We lift up our leaders and we ask that you would inspire each one to follow you more closely. And we lift up this nation of ours. And we praise you and thank you for giving us the privilege of living here, free to live and worship you. We pray that you will protect and guide the leaders of this nation and the leaders of all nations. We pray that their hearts be open to your Holy Spirit and that you will guide them in governing and caring for their people. We pray for peace and the end of wars and unrest. We pray that you heal those who are sick, comfort those who have lost loved ones, and heal this world which has, has, been so, has seen so much pain and suffering. We ask that you may unite this nation to overcome the hatred and the negativity we're experiencing today. We lift up the homeless, the hungry, the hurt, the abused, the lost, and we ask that you provide comfort and protect them. We lift up our brothers and sisters who are ill or in pain, either physically or spiritually. We lift them up to you now, as well as others who are named in our hearts. We lift up Ken Finney, and we ask for restoration of his mind and healing of body and spirit. 
We lift up Dee Finney for strength and comfort as she cares for Ken. We lift up Stevie Bradley. We pray, Father, that he would become stronger and stronger each day, and that you would give him the will and the desire and the wisdom to do what has to be done in order to achieve this healing. We lift up Catherine DePew for healing from cancer, and we pray that the chemo treatments are working to remove all those cancer cells from her body. We lift up Betty McNamara. We ask that you heal her body and that you give her your peace and your comfort. We lift up Barbara Schwally, and we pray, Father, that you will heal her and restore her. We don't understand why some suffer, but we trust in you, and we believe that that healing comes from you, whatever form that healing takes. Give her strength to fight, and comfort and peace to her spirit. Be with her family as they too struggle. Lord, we lift up Madeline to you, and we pray, Father, that you would be with her during this, this time of, of trial. We pray, Father, that you be with the hands of the surgeons and the nurses that care for her tomorrow. We lift up Bucky Green. We pray that you would relieve him of his pain, that you would heal him completely. And Lord, for the, for the people and the families of lost loved ones, we remember the family of Michelle C. We ask that you bring her peace and comfort knowing that she is now in your loving arms. For the family of Stephanie Garbilla, we ask for peace and comfort, knowing that she is with you and is at home here. We lift up Eric Sandiv, and we pray, Father, that you would be with his wife and his children, that you would wrap your loving arms around them, wipe away their tears, and bring them comfort and peace. We pray that you would just be with them and be with all of those who have lost loved ones. Keep reminding us, Lord, that you're with us through any situation we may face. If you bring us to it, you will bring us through it. We lift up these prayers and those prayers that remain unspoken to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Divide us the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have closing him. Kingdom number 415, take up thy throne. <coughs> Everyone rise and sing together.
delighting you the diversity and blessings that God has lavished upon each one. Celebrate the good news of the love of God with all people and offer peace and blessing to each one. Now you go in peace. Amen.